In this short introductory lecture, we'll take a quick tour of the course so that you have a better idea of what to expect as you're moving through the course. In the next lecture, I'm also going to say a few words about what you should have covered before you start taking this course. Now, in terms of content, this course is going to be a combination of more traditional note-based lectures where I hand write out some notes and as I'm explaining things, and then some code along screencasts. Now, in terms of the handwritten notes, um, you're strongly encouraged to write your own version of the notes as you're watching each video. Now, this is going to seem very slow and maybe even a little bit tedious at the start, but it's really, really valuable. And there's a particular reason why I suggest you do this. Because as you're working through a course or as you're working through a video and I'm explaining something, if you're writing your own notes, you're going to be moving at a much better pace. And it's going to allow you to also write your own additional comments and notes as we're moving through each lecture. Now, as I say, it's probably going to feel a little bit slow for you at the start, but you're going to get to the end of each lecture having felt like you've actually taken a short lecture rather than just seeing a video if you go and write your notes as we're, as we're moving through uh, each video. Now, for the coding-based lectures, again, I'd encourage you to write your own version of the code in parallel with me as you're moving through the course. All of the code that we write in the course is going to be downloadable. So after we get to the end of a section uh, where we're producing some code, you'll be able to download all of the code that we wrote in that section. So for example, um, we're going to write a block of code between lectures 19 and 31. So you can download all of that finished working code uh, in lecture 31.1, immediately following lecture 31. So all of these downloads will be clearly marked in the course index. Now, if you run into difficulty and the code that you write is not behaving as you would expect based on the based on the video lecture, well, then the first thing you should do is refer to the downloadable version of the code because you know that version of the code is working. And so you can compare what you've written to the code that's working. And then that way you'll be able to identify um, more quickly than I can uh, for you. You'll be able to identify what the issue is. If you do have questions on a particular lecture, make sure to write those in the comment section below the relevant lecture or that accompanies the relevant lecture and I'll respond to them directly there. Try and do that rather than emailing me because that way other students can benefit from the record of the discussion that we've had. Okay, so let's just get in and have a look now at the various different sections of the course. So in section two, we're going to start our analysis of cable behavior. Now we focus on cables, as I've said previously, um, in this course, really because they're the classic example of a structure that undergoes geometric nonlinearity or that experiences geometric nonlinearity because fundamentally they change shape when we apply loads to them. So in section two of the course, we're going to start our analysis of cables and building our understanding of cable behavior by analyzing the linear solution or by deriving a linear uh, solution for cable behavior. In other words, we're going to derive an equation that describes the shape of a cable and we're going to ignore all nonlinear effects. Now, this is going to act as a really helpful baseline that we can compare our nonlinear code against later on in the course. In section three, we're going to start talking about nonlinear structural behavior, and in particular, we're going to focus on geometric nonlinearity. The real aim of this section is to take the mystery out of that term, geometric nonlinearity. We're also going to start talking about and thinking about how we might solve for the behavior of a nonlinear structure, and in particular, we'll introduce the Newton Raphson iterative method, which is really what's going to inform the architecture of our solver later on in the course. One of the main requirements of a matrix-based nonlinear structural analysis is a stiffness matrix that can capture the influence of large deflections. Okay, so in section four, we're going to focus on building out this stiffness matrix or modifying the more familiar linear element stiffness matrix to capture the influence of large amplitude deflections. So some familiarity with the prerequisite material, in particular uh, the stiffness matrix for linear bar elements is going to be quite helpful in this section. So now that we have a nonlinear element stiffness matrix, and we also have an understanding of how, at least at a concept level, we might construct an algorithm to iterate our way towards a solution for a nonlinear structural behavior. In section five, we're going to do the bulk of our code development. We're actually going to bring everything together and build out our solver in Python. Now there's going to be quite a lot of code to write here, but we're going to 
break things up into bite-sized chunks. So each individual lecture in this section is going to be focused on achieving quite a, quite a small and focused task. Again, you can make life a lot easier on yourself in section five here if you have some familiarity with the linear 2D trust solver that we built in the prerequisite course. So by the time you get to the end of section five, you're going to have a functioning iterative nonlinear structural solver. So after building our solver in section five, in section six, we can turn our attention to visualizing our output results. We're gonna build a data visualization that really brings things to life and allows us to explore how our structure evolves into its final state. In section seven, we're gonna to return to a conversation that we started at the beginning of the course. We'll use our solver to simulate the cable that we kicked the whole course off with. We're gonna be able to closely approximate the, the linear solution that we derived earlier, but we're also gonna be able to observe the emergence of nonlinear behavior as the axial stiffness of the cable is progressively reduced. So section seven acts as a validation of sorts uh, for our code up to this point. In section eight, we're gonna take a, a break from pure coding and detour over to Blender. Blender is the open source modeling tool that we're gonna be using to generate our structural geometry. Now, if you've taken degree tutors courses before, uh, you're gonna be fairly familiar with uh, our use of Blender. But if you're completely new to Blender, I've included an appendix section at the end of this course that will help you get set up and familiar with the, uh, with the modeling tools within Blender. In the final section of the course, we're going to expand our solver to analyze structures that consist of both bar elements, which can resist tension and compression, and cable elements, which can resist tension only. Our solver doesn't yet have this capability to differentiate or to distinguish between these two kinds of elements, so we'll put that right in this section of the course. We're also going to complete the modeling and analysis of a cable stayed lattice tower. This is a, a nice example of a very, very common structure that utilizes uh, cable stays, which themselves exhibit nonlinear structural behavior. So by the end of the course, you're going to have a really good understanding of nonlinear behavior and in particular geometric nonlinearity. You're going to understand when it's important and when you need to consider it and when you can probably ignore it. You'll also have built a tool to analyze this really complex structural behavior. And because it's a tool you've built, you're gonna understand it inside out. Now it's also worth remembering or stating at this point that the tool that we build is not meant to be a replacement for commercial nonlinear structural analysis software. We're not going to be rebuilding SAP 2000 in this course. Commercial packages like that have many, 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 many functions, and they're maintained by an army of developers. That's not really our focus here. We're not trying to rebuild something like that. Our objective here is to build your understanding of nonlinear structural behavior. And the best way to do that is to put into practice what you've learned by building your own modest but focused structural analysis toolbox. So now that you have a roadmap for the journey ahead, we can move on to the next lecture and just say a few words about prerequisites that I've mentioned quite a lot up to this point. So I'm gonna focus in on that in the next lecture and really give you a good idea of what you should cover uh, before completing this course.